Good morning. I wanted to introduce myself. A lot of you are my coaching clients. You might already know me. I'm Sally Sykes. I'm a functional medicine health coach, um, and I help people optimize their health. And that can include hormones and thyroid, nutrient deficiencies, inflammation, weight loss. I have a lot of people who are also working with doctors who are taking um, semaglutide or GLP-1 agonists for weight loss, uh, getting the best results from those and avoiding side effects. But um, getting off birth control, functional fertility, I've been doing this for about 15 years um, and I absolutely love it. I'm super passionate about it. I got into it when my dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and then I started looking into uh, prevention because there's no cure for dementia or cognitive decline, but it turns out there are a lot of ways to prevent cognitive decline. Um, but you got to start early and that's where functional medicine really shines. Functional medicine really shines in, uh, I think, I feel like acute care, right? You break, break your leg, you go, you need it to set, you've got cancer, we're going to treat the cancer, but there's not a whole lot of, you know, nutrition, preventative care, how do we get less inflamed, how do we avoid avoid getting sick in the first place so we don't have to take pharmaceuticals to mask symptoms. We want to find out what's the root cause of my anxiety, depression, inflammation, hair loss, fatigue, low libido. I come from a family of doctors, so I love conventional medicine as well. And functional medicine is, is rooted in science. My, my feeling is the best combination is always a combination of a licensed medical practitioner, like an MD, a PA, an NP, a DO, someone who can prescribe, and a functional medicine health coach like myself. And I help people find those practitioners. And so as a health coach, I can help you with the diet and lifestyle changes that are needed to um, to avoid some of these chronic diseases in the first place. And then if you need additional help and lab testing, most people are trying to find, find a doctor who will listen to them, um, who will order the right tests. Um, I'll do a, a different video on, on lab tests because that's one of my passions in a later video. But uh, just to say it's really important to test the right things and the right time also. And then when you're looking at those lab tests, you want to work with a functional medicine practitioner who is knowledgeable about optimal ranges versus normal ranges. The normal ranges, right, are the averages of all the mostly sick people getting those labs at that lab. And as the American population gets sicker and sicker, those normal ranges, it's just a statistical average, get sicker and sicker. Mm. We have people coming in, they, they are symptomatic, they are, they're exhausted, their hair is falling out, they have no libido, they cannot lose weight no matter what they do. And they get their labs done and their doctors say, oh, everything is normal. But is it optimal for good health? Um, I really, I love helping people find a practitioner they can work with who, who understands that. And then, um, and I have been analyzing labs for a long, long time and that's one of the things I do. And then they take that lab analysis to, to their doctors and they're able to uh, to work from that, which is really helpful. A little more about me. Yes, I'm a functional medicine health coach for 15 years. Before that, you guys, I was an attorney. I um, I grew up in Texas, oldest of four kids, oldest of all the cousins, just your typical first child, right? I have to prove myself and study and all that. Um, and I was a good writer, so that meant I was going to law school. Um, I also have my master's in public affairs and both from UT. I went did my undergrad in English and Spanish at Georgetown University in DC. And I practiced law for a couple of years here um, at the University of Texas System, Office of General Counsel. It was a really good mix of my master's in public affairs and, um, and my law degree. And I really, really loved it. And then I got married and had kids. And practicing law, I found was not super conducive to to parenthood, I really wasn't sure. Look, women are judged regardless of what we do, I feel like. And I just remember looking at the price of daycare versus the salary I made, and it was essentially a wash. I decided to stop practicing law, which I wish, it's really too bad that we're forced to make these decisions or we feel like we are. And then we end up feeling like uh, whatever we have chosen is the wrong thing anyway, right? But I did, and you know what? The beautiful thing about that it was that I got to follow my passion, and I've always been passionate about health. It, it allowed me to pursue that even more, and I feel like it was ended up being a really good thing. I pretty much immediately got into functional medicine coaching, the, but even before my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and that really propelled me. The very first thing was functional fertility, helping my friends get pregnant. When my ex-husband and I decided we wanted to have children, 
I just didn't want to try randomly just I just thought well that would be so disappointing taking negative pregnancy tests every month I was 30 at the time I was like I have spent my entire life trying not to get pregnant how how do I actually get pregnant? And I, you know, I grew up in a very sex positive household uh, with all of the right information and knew my body parts, but I, I realized I really didn't know a lot about fertility. And, and so I started researching it. And that's, I love to learn. If you've ever figured out what your, your top strengths are, love of learning is, is my what top after humor, which I'm not really showing in this thing, but, but I can be kind of inappropriate sometimes. I started researching, you guys, the best book if you want to really learn about your body and, and get pregnant fast. Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler. I think it's W-E-S-C-H-L-E-R. Y'all, it's this thick. Get it. Get it. Read it. Do it. Every, it should be required reading to know about our bodies. It taught me that really we have a six-day fertile window every month. That's it. Which I was like, oh my gosh. I remember spending my entire teenage years thinking, oh my God, I can get pregnant at any time, which is a decent assumption and prevented some issues. But um, but if you're trying to get pregnant, that was that was really interesting. Then I learned how to take my temperature every morning and learn when I was ovulating. Because when you go to ob -Gin, they have something called the pregnancy wheel. God, I hope they have gotten rid of this by now. But it basically assumes every woman ovulates on day 14. Y'all, that is not the case. And if you don't ovulate on day 14, it does not mean you're infertile or something is wrong with you. There is a healthy range of, of menstrual cycles. I think if your menstrual cycle is like between 26 and 35 days, I can't remember what it is, look it up. That's perfectly normal. The time between ovulation and when you get your period is pretty much uniform between all women, it's two weeks. The time that varies is between the first day of your period and when you ovulate, right? If you're under a lot of stress, you might not ovulate. You might ovulate later because your body's like, we're not dropping an egg right now. Or if you're um, in perimenopause like I am, you might start ovulating sooner. Like you find right at the end of your period, you're like, oh, I am, my libido is, woo, and you notice fertile cervical fluid is what we're now calling it. But taking charge of your fertility will learn, teach you all of this, how to take your temperature because your temperature rises by half a degree after you ovulate, you'll start tracking it and you'll see, ooh, I ovulated, or maybe I didn't. And then you can start to dig deeper with a functional medicine practitioner. Why aren't you ovulating? Because there's a whole lot of reasons why and we can dig into that. Maybe you have PCOS, maybe it's insulin resistance. Maybe we're looking at finding a doctor to prescribe a GLP-1 medication like semaglutide to help reverse that. So you can start ovulating again. So there's so many ways to fix this, but the first is getting the data and taking your temperature every single morning at the same time before you get out of bed, because as soon as you get out of bed, your temperature starts going up. That's huge. And you start tracking it. I used the app Fertility Friend. That is my favorite app. I don't make any money from that. It's just, look, I've used it for 20 years now. I still have the charts from when I got pregnant with both of my children. And now I have, and I have the charts from when I finally stopped taking the birth control pill, thank God. And, and I still, I still use it and I love it. It gives me so much information about my body. By the way, taking your temperature, it gives you fertility information. It also gives you information about the function of your thyroid. If you are cold all the time and your temp body temperature is cold, is very low all the time, that is a sign to get your thyroid checked. And not just a TSH, you need a full thyroid panel. TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3. TPO and TG antibodies. Those are your Hashimoto's antibodies, all of that. And if your practitioner will not do that, it's time to find one who will. I love Modern Thyroid Clinic, McCall McPherson. You can follow her on Instagram. She has so much beautiful information about thyroid, but it, that's incidentally, it's great to walk into a doctor's office saying, my temperature is 96.7 all the time. And I'm cold all the time. My hair is falling out. I'm extremely fatigued. And you're telling me my thyroid's normal. McCall will not do that to you. So anyway. That's an aside. Functional fertility was kind of my first first stop. I had at least three friends who were about to do IVF. They've been told they were just infertile. It turned out they just didn't ovulate on day 14. I didn't ovulate on day 14. I ovulated on day 17. So turns out if you actually have sex on the day you ovulate, you can get pregnant. <laughs> How about that? And you don't need IVF. No doctor had ever told these people that. Within three months, I had three friends get pregnant just by taking their temperatures and figure out when they ovulate. 
and that varied. Somebody was like, oh, mine was day 12. So I was trying at the wrong time. Mine was trying too late. Some people like me, oh, day 17, 18, 19, 20 even. Well, you think that's gonna make a difference, y'all? And that just made me super passionate because I think a lot of a lot of people know if you've seen or had friends or family or loved ones go through fertility treatments, it's a lot. You're injecting yourself with hormones. It, it does not fun things to your mood. It's an ordeal. It's not just nothing. The fact that that, that is a, one of my favorite examples of where functional medicine just really shines and helps avoid unnecessary procedures. Now, not for everyone. Look, if you're older and your ovarian reserve is, is tapped out and there's just, there's some other, this is that's where conventional medicine, we're gonna do, go straight to them and we're gonna do our best to get you pregnant that way. But if you're young and otherwise healthy, I would always say, look, at least start with Tony Weschler's taking charge of your fertility. Amazing you mind blown and it gives you so much control over your own body and your own life knowledge is power i love that so that's how i got started and i just have continued to to learn and research that's what i do in my spare time i just love i love reading i love listening podcasts reading books by medical doctors on any any subject relating to functional medicine disease prevention my favorite is Dr. Dale Bredesen's The End of Alzheimer's, and he talks about there are a multitude of factors contributing to cognitive decline, and they are mostly, almost all, preventable, which is amazing news if you have Alzheimer's or dementia in your family, you guys. I love this book, and it's, it's the basis for my entire functional medicine practice, truly. And it's that's not to say that's I only work with people who are trying to avoid cognitive decline. In fact, that's mostly I work with people who are trying to lose weight. But the great thing is, what people don't know is in improving their underlying health in these other ways, reversing insulin resistance, losing, uh, losing weight, reducing inflammation, replacing your hormones and uh, with bioidentical hormones, even in small amounts in perimenopause, start early, menopause and andropause, you guys are not immune. All of these things, making sure your thyroid is functioning optimally, which finding a good practitioner who can prescribe thyroid hormone if you need it to get yourself up to optimal. Incidentally, I don't believe that bioidentical hormone replacement and thyroid hormone replacement are, yes, they are prescriptions. I don't see them as pharmaceuticals in the sense that they are the exact same molecule our bodies make and we are giving that back to our bodies. I always use the example of a woman comes in with insomnia and anxiety and she has given an SSRI and a Xanax and a sleeping pill like Ambien. She does not have a Xanax deficiency. She does not have an Ambien deficiency. But if she's in her 40s, even in her late 30s, she probably has a progesterone deficiency, right? Because that's when perimenopause starts. That's when we start to not ovulate every month. And ovulation is when we make progesterone. And progesterone, ladies, is magic. It is critical for sleep and mood and anxiety. The two biggest symptoms of low progesterone are insomnia and anxiety. But progesterone is also a diuretic. That's why we make progesterone when we ovulate, right? I feel chill right after we ovulate. And then right before our period starts, the progesterone starts to fall off and that's when we get our PMS symptoms, right? It's not the progesterone doing it. It's our little flat loss of progesterone. And then as we get older and we're not even ovulating every month, ooh, we start to wonder, why am I so moody? Why am I uh, retaining water? Progesterone's a diuretic. It raises our body temperature. That's what causes the, the raise in body temperature that we see in uh, during ovulation. Uh, when our body temperature is higher, it raises our metabolism. Why am I gaining weight? Why am I feeling so poofy? We start to get estrogen dominant, too much estrogen, not enough progesterone. So it's really important to be working with a functional medicine practitioner who understands the value of bioidentical hormone replacement and perimenopause and menopause and andropause and that for women it's not just about estrogen and menopause in fact all three hormones are generally critical and you of course want to work with your practitioner and test the right time i can help you with that a lot of practitioners will just have you test hormones any time of the month if you're um, 
it's still cycling, that does not get us the best data. You wanna test your progesterone five to seven days before your next period starts, the first day of your next period. That'll tell us more information about whether you're ovulating. Ideally, you're taking your temperature every morning. That's really gonna tell us if you're ovulating, but a lot of my, my patients and clients are not, for whatever reason, they're not interested in doing that or they, it just doesn't fit into their lifestyle. If that's not an issue, we wanna get it tested at the right time. But it would be important to work with someone who understands the value of bioidentical hormone replacement. Look, even in small amounts can prevent osteoporosis, heart disease, dementia, unwanted weight gain, especially around the middle. It's gonna affect your hair loss, your skin laxity, your mood. Hormones make us who we are. It's critical. In perimenopause, you tend typically are not supplementing with estrogen. Perimenopause is a time of high and fluctuating estrogen. And so, and it could be a time of estrogen dominance, which can increase allergies and inflammation and just make you feel itchy from the inside out and getting, so in, during perimenopause, which can be like the 13 years before your periods actually stop, menopause is defined as you have not had a bleed for 12 months and you have three consecutive blood tests for your FSH that are 30 or over. So that's menopause. Perimenopause is like the 13 years before that where everything's going to hell in a handbasket, right? Where you're like, why don't I feel like myself? All of a sudden I can't lose weight. All of a sudden, all of a sudden I'm turning into a Karen. What's happening with my mood? Uh, my relationships are suffering. There's no need to suffer like that. Unfortunately, most conventional doctors are just not trained in hormone replacement. Or you'll show up and all they offer is pellets. Pellets will be testosterone or estrogen or both little pellets that are inserted into your backside and they slowly dissolve over time. You get them every three to four months. But for some people, that's not the right fit. You want a practitioner who is willing to also prescribe an estradiol patch if you're in menopause or if you are in perimenopause, well, you want all three in menopause. All right, let's start with menopause. Estradiol patch, which is generic, it's a prescription, but you can get that at any pharmacy. Prescription, oral, micronized progesterone, 100 to 200 milligrams per night, amazing for sleep and anxiety. That's gonna balance your estrogen. This is, this is menopause, we need all three. Then if your tests show that testosterone is low, you might also optional here, because not everyone's testosterone is low in menopause, a compounded testosterone cream. Alternatively in menopause, you could have estrogen and testosterone in a pellet if needed and you could take the oral micronized progesterone at night perimenopause we're not take we're not doing estrogen we're just doing oral micronized progesterone at night 100 to 200 milligrams i do 100 milligrams a night and i up it to 200 milligrams the week before my period that just seems to work I'm, i've been experimenting with it for, for a while but and I, because my, and my testosterone is permanently low because I was on birth control for 15 years. I take, I use a, a compounded testosterone cream that I have filled at a, comp, at a compounding pharmacy. That's one of the things I help my coaching clients with is what are all your options that you can ask? Cause sometimes you go to the doctor and you're trying to get help. And th if the doctor isn't well informed about women's health and hormone replacement, you're not gonna get what you need. At least what I can do, even though I'm not a doctor, I can give you the questions to ask. Hey, I would like to try a trial of these, you know, a, a oral micronized progesterone, 100 to 200 milligrams a night. I would like to try, try a trial of, based on my low testosterone in my labs and these symptoms that I'm having, a compounded testosterone cream, da da da. I can help with that. Um, I can help you communicate with your doctor so you can get where you need to go faster, right? We're just so many women and men have just been suffering for 10 years and going from doctor to doctor and just being told it's all in their head or no, there's nothing we can do. Here's your sleeping pill, here's your antidepressant or here's for men, here's your statin, here's your blood pressure meds. No one has told them that carbs increase the blood pressure more than anything or that statins decimate testosterone. What? And double the risk of your diabetes. So they come in, they're diabetic, they have no testosterone, they're gaining weight, they're miserable. A lot of these guys will thought if I'd known that, I would have changed my diet and exercise, but I didn't know, I wasn't motivated. And a lot of these doctors, look, they're amazing, but some of them, some of them don't have the training in it either, right? They're struggling with their own health issues. And that's medical school in this country. And I think some of that is starting to change. There's just not, look, we can't be experts in everything. 
and doctors are so overworked and nurse practitioners and PAs, all of our amazing, and DOs, all of our amazing prescribers. Y'all, our system is ridiculous. They don't make enough money. They're overworked, they're underpaid. What I try to do as a health coach is just play a supportive role to try to help you get the best out of your practitioners that you currently have and be a support system. And the, the really the best practitioners get my lab analysis report and they're like, oh, this is great. This really saves me a lot of time and now I can go home to my kids. I mean, it's, it's just helpful because they don't have to go then, you know, guess. And they're like, oh, this at least give me, gives me a start. I can look this up or ask the prescribing physician. And they're like, oh, that's exactly, yes, I forgot, but that's so right. And that we can at least try that or that is safe and effective. But it's, it's just a place to start. Um, because for most of my clients, they are not interested in doing their own health research, right? They are, I don't take care of my own car. I don't change my own oil. We all have the things we're, we're best at. And that's our gift that we give to others. And so mine is being obsessed with healthcare, health research and prevention and disease prevention. I have a picture of my dad who died at 67 of Alzheimer's. He's just right there front and center with me when I was like six or seven sitting in his lab little picture. Just that's front and center for me. Dad, he died in 2014. I haven't had him for the last 10 years of my life. He doesn't know my kids. My kids don't know him. They never got to know him. That is not okay. And I just, I don't want that for myself. And I definitely don't want it for any of my coaching clients or my family members. To the extent that we can all just work together, the better. And there are some awesome practitioners out there. I've got a list going, doctors and, and PAs and NPs and DOs who are really, who have either gone back for functional medicine training or are really interested in learning more and they really are just sick of seeing their patients not get better and they really want to learn more and they're they are out there um and I'm, I'm keeping a list if you see this and you have one that is really good please put it in the comments i want to add to my list whether it's in texas or, or uh, outside of texas really anywhere in the united states especially because a lot of people are doing telehealth these days so, and I have coaching clients all over the world. So anyone that you, that is, that you have found is helpful in functional medicine, preventative care, bioidentical hormone replacement for both men and women, full thyroid optimization, treating with, you know, armor thyroid and lyothyronine as well as levothyroxine if needed. And you know, you know, full lab testing and listening to patients, um, optimal versus normal labs, that kind of thing. That's that's what my patients are and my coaching clients are looking for. So that is my introduction. Wow, that was a really long introduction to to what I do. And then you can come find me on Instagram at Sally Dahl Sykes, or you can email me at Sally Dahl Sykes at gmail.com. That's S A L L Y D A H L S Y K E S. I'd love to hear from you. Would love to hear in the comments if you have any questions and I'm gonna start making more and more of these videos on just different topics. All right, have a great day.